Yeah. You're able to see my screen, right? Yes. Right. Okay. So in the morning session, we just connected to the SQL Server after installing this SMS. I'll create a tracker, guys. Today I'll create a tracker. Okay. I'll as promised. I'll add some tasks to the tracker. Like uh, we have few uh, to do list, right? We have to complete those things. Like till now, whatever demos we have completed, I'll add those demos to the tracker. So I'll give you like everyone has to select whether you completed or whether the task is in progress like that. I'll create a tracker. Okay. For last batch, how I created the tracker with assignments and all, I'll create a tracker today. So you can update your status like what and all components you completed till now, what and all demos you completed till now, whether you stuck at any point. Okay. And also give some assignments also so that those assignments will be helpful for the entry questions and all. Right. So I'll create a tracker today, guys. Today, max today or tomorrow morning definitely before the next class you will get the access to the tracker so i hope everyone got the access to the videos right so very simple sometimes you will not get any mail notification as discussed earlier whatever your registered gmail id is there log into your gmail id and open the google drive thank you thank you later wa please So log into your Gmail, the registered Gmail ID and open the Google Drive. There in the left side section, you can see shared with me option. Click on that shared with me. You can see the batch. Thank you. You can see the batch 55 videos folder. You can see guys in your Google Drive. Okay, just to... Yeah, okay, Tali. You can just check it once. Okay, you can see that. Yeah, what is... Can... What is... Yeah. Okay, Raj Gopal. Okay, just check it once, guys. Right. So, so now let's continue the discussion. So in the morning session, we discussed about the SSMS installation. So how to download SSMS, how to install SSMS, how to open SSMS, what is the use of the SSMS when it was introduced? Okay, before SSMS, what kind of tools are there? What is the use of the SSMS in the organization? So everything we discussed, guys. So again, few people are having doubts like how we are going to connect if it is remote. Priya, I guess you asked this question in the WhatsApp, right? So don't worry. In the security discussion, okay, in the security concept, uh, I'll explain how this local connections will work, how the remote connections will work. As of now, you don't worry. How developers will work, how developers will connect to SQL Server, how DBS will connect to SQL Server, I'll, I'll explain in the security concept as of now. Don't worry about it, okay? No, Shanmuk, I am not receiving any videos. Just check it once. Google Drive, left side shared with me. If okay. not, just send the screenshot to me by clicking okay. share with me option. Check whether you are using registered Gmail ID or not. Why? Because people will have two, three Gmail IDs. By mistake, okay. if you see another Gmail ID, you don't find it. Whatever registered Gmail ID is there, Log into that Gmail ID, open the Google Drive, and left side click on shared with me, send a screenshot so that I'll verify and I'll give you the access. Nothing to worry. Okay. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. So let's discuss about this uh, SSMS, guys. So as we discussed in the previous session, SSMS is a tool. By using this tool, we can connect to the running SQL instances. Okay. So this was introduced from SQL Server 2005. Before SSMS, we have Query Analyzer, right? So SSMS up to 2014, this is an inbuilt tool up to SQL Server 2014. It's an inbuilt tool so that during the SQL Server installation itself, you have to select management tools. Then itself, it will be installed. SSMS will be installed. So no need to install separately up to SQL Server 2014. Okay, from 2016 onwards, SSMS tool is separated, guys. So you have to separately download SSMS and you have to install after SQL Server installation. Whatever I'm doing now, these are the post-installation things in the organization also. We will have post-installation things. Under post-installation things, we have to install the SSMS, guys. So now my question is, 
can i use a single ssms to connect to all sql servers for example in this windows machine you know that this is windows server 2012 sorry 2019 earlier we discussed it right in this windows machine what and all sql servers i can install guys what and all sql servers i can install in this windows machine what and all sql servers i can install सेपरेट मैनेजमेंट स्टूडियो फॉर ईच वर्षन Yes or no? Just tell your answer, guys. Don't worry. No issues. You can. No, no, no. No. This is just your opinion. Just tell me whether can I manage all the versions of SQL servers using a single management studio, or for every SQL server, do I need to install a separate management studio? Tell me yes or no. Just type your answers in the chat. Type your answers in the chat quickly. right okay very good guys so we can manage all instances from single ssms very good swapnil so ramana we can manage with a single ssms sirisha no priya we can use single ssms very good srivani yes akshita yes saida no need to install prasad nandigam no sneha ankit yes ramana no raj no priya no fayaz no swapnil no abdullah no very good guys okay thanks for the participation so the answer is okay the answer is no guys no need to install multiple copies of ssms one copy of ssms is enough to connect to all the versions of the sql server again i am repeating one copy of sql server management studio is enough to connect to all the sql server versions if you want you can install many copies for each version you can install a separate ssms but technically not required are you getting the point guys technically not required so one copy of one copy of ssms is enough is enough in a windows machine okay we can connect to all the versions of sql servers why because that is just a tool that is a client using that client you can connect to sql server but again we have some challenges guys we have some challenges okay ramya not sure what happened you can send it to everyone okay ramya fine we have some challenges we can connect the answer is we can use a single ssms copy to connect to all the versions of sql servers that's for sure but one challenge is there okay very simple i'll tell you <coughs> see For example, imagine for every SQL Server SSMS will be there. For example, you install SQL Server 2012. Imagine SQL Server 2012. So with this, we'll get SSMS. So whatever SSMS you are getting with the 2012, that is SSMS 2012, right? SSMS 2012. So in this SSMS 2012, we can connect the SQL Server 2014, 2016, 2017, 2019, 2022 also. But in the lower versions of SSMS. In the lower versions of SSMS, SSMS, the higher version SQL Server features are not visible. The higher version SQL Server features, okay, features are not visible. Again, I'll tell you, guys, if your management studio is higher version, imagine very simple. 
if your management studio is sql server 2022 or the latest version or the highest version so all the lower version sql servers you can connect but i'm sorry here nothing will happen see if your management studio is higher version all the lower version features will be visible and it will work properly but if your management studio is lower version you can still connect to higher version sql server but the higher version features are not visible in the lower version ssms again i'll repeat my words for example sql server 2008 is there 2008 when you install 2008 you will get a ssms 2008 guys same version in this ssms 2008 you can connect the sql server 2022 also no issues but whatever new features are there in the sql server 2022 those new features are not visible in the 2008 ssms guys are you getting the point <laughs> Yes. Is it clear, guys? If your SSMS is higher version, you are connecting to lower version of SQL Server. No issues at all. Happily, everything will work. If your SSMS is lower version, if your SQL Servers are higher version, then you can connect to the higher version SQL Servers. But higher version features are not visible in the lower version SSMS. Is it clear, guys? In this scenario. i can connect sql server 2022 in ssms 2008 but in sql server 2022 we have latest features like always on and all of course it was started from 2012 only but always on feature will not be visible in ssms 2008 why because the higher version features will not be visible or will not work in the lower version ssms is it clear guys everyone everyone is it clear so the answer to my first question whether i can use the same ssms to connect to all the sql server versions the answer is yes you can use a single ssms to connect to all the sql server versions but there is a challenge if your ssms is higher version and you are connecting lower sql lower version of sql servers no issues no issues at all happily you can work with uh, all the features but your ssms is lower version and you are connecting to higher version sql server the higher version sql server features will not be visible in the lower version ssms is it clear guys is it clear say for example see see this is always on feature right you can see always on feature i can this is a 2019 instance i can connect this 2019 instance in 2008 ssms also but when i connect this instance in 2008 ssms it will be connected successfully but the always on feature is the latest version so this feature this folder itself you cannot see in the 2008 ssms is it clear guys sometimes we will be confused why because when we are working with the old machines you might get this kind of confusion you will feel where is the always on i can't to 2019 where is the always on feature and all so what is the problem here if you are using older version of management studio the higher version features won't be visible in the lower version of management studio guys is it clear everyone are we good questions doubts you want me to explain again no doubt sir questions guys any questions why you are so silent very simple lower to higher is possible but higher to lower okay higher version features won't be visible in the lower version of ssms that's it now in the morning we used this computer name to connect to default instance right so i am disconnecting this now okay i am kind of disconnecting to the server now again i'll use the same computer name okay so i am giving computer name to connect to the default instance okay right now i am connected to the sql server fine now again click on this connect button <clears throat> i'll give one more name called okay uh local host local host right i am able to connect again i am trying to connect to the sql server this time i'll give okay what i'll give guys local what is this local i am able to connect and again i am clicking on connect button this time i'll simply give dot just dot i am not giving anything just dot i am still able to connect so guys how many instances i installed in this machine guys how many instances i installed in this machine two two two, two. two. only one two. only one one or two Two. two instances. Two. Okay, in the yesterday Before, two instances and today morning one, one, one. two one, instances. One, one, one. Yeah, two instances I installed yesterday evening one instance, today morning one instance. 
So now each entry is one instance, guys. If you see here, this is one instance, this is one instance, this is one instance, and this is one instance. So total, how many instances are there, guys? Total, how many instances are there? <clears throat> one. Four. 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 One or two? Four. How many entries you can see here? Four. 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 four entries. Four. But we installed only two instances, right? Why we can see four instances here? Uh, all are same, I think. No, all these instances are administered. Default mm. instances. Very good. Very good, Priya. Okay, guys. My name is Shanmuk. Okay? As a trainer, my legal name is different. My parents will call me, call me with a different name. My friends will call me with a different name. Not only me, everyone will have the same kind of names, right? In your... Friend circle, you will call. Uh, they will call you with a different name. In your family, they will call you with a different name. So, the names are different, but at the end of the day, they are calling you only, right? You are the single product, right? So here also, same kind of things, guys. These are all the other names of default instance. Are you getting the point, guys? Local host represent computer name. Local represents computer name. Dot represents computer name. So only one instance actually I am connecting. Technically, if you see, I am connecting to a single instance. Okay. So if you want to see, right click, go to properties. On this instance, you can see. What is the instance name, guys? Here you can see. Okay. Let me see. Here you can see on top. Okay. What you can see? FLB. Computer name you can see. Right. Cancel it. Now go to this one. Go to properties. Right click properties. Okay. Same. FLB. Right. And cancel. Now go to this one. Local. Right click properties. Same. FLB. Okay. And cancel. And dot. Right click properties. Same. You can still see the same. Which is your <coughs> computer name. So these are all different names of computer name guys. Are you getting the point? Are you getting the point, guys? These are all different names of computer name. Computer name, local host represents computer name. Local in the brackets represents computer name. Dot is also a computer name. In the Windows terminology, dot is nothing but computer name, guys. In the Windows terminology, dot is nothing but computer name. So why? Because people will use different, different approaches to connect to SQL Server. So if you see dot, hey, where is the server name? If you ask your colleague, definitely he'll, he'll catch you. Okay, this guy don't know. We can also connect to default instance using dot. This guy don't know. They might think in a different way. He's a fake guy. So, see, seriously, when our students completed the training, when they got the job, when they are into the organization, seniors learn from our students, guys. I'll simply tell one thing. Why? Because, see, in the organization, once you are into the organization, you will not get much exposure to all the things. Whatever daily routine things are there, daily those things only will do it. In some companies, seriously, you don't believe me, whatever we are discussing, out of 100%, 5-10% they will do in the organization, just backups, restore health checks daily. So sometimes so the seniors, those who are working, having 5 years, 6 years people also, they don't know some of the things. But as you are taking training, you will get a 360 degrees exposure to SQL Server. So believe me, people, those some of the people, some of the real-time experts also, they don't know we have these many ways to connect to default instance. Seriously, I'm saying. People will come and ask you. They will learn from you. And they will learn the shortcuts also. They don't know a lot of shortcuts. They will still follow the same long cut. They will, they will learn shortcuts from you. So if you are practicing properly and if you are good, whatever we are discussing, whatever we are, we are, we are at, um, in, the, in the class, whatever we are discussing, if you are practicing regularly, you will, you, will, you will be in a position to teach others, guys. I'm sure. Okay, so these are all different, different names of default instance. Like this, we have two, three more methods also there. We can connect to SQL Server using IP address. So that is the assignment I'm giving it to you. How to connect to SQL Server using IP address? Check it and let me know. Simple, very simple assignment I am giving you guys. 
how to connect to SQL Server using IP address? <laughs> slash slash IP address. Right. No, no. Right, and let me know. Send me the screenshot for me. Okay. So these are like this. We have almost seven eight methods are there to connect to the default instance. We just discussed four methods. Like almost seven eight methods are there to connect to default instance. Okay. So at the end of the day. these are all the different names of the default instance we are not actually installed four instances actually we are connected to single instance only but using different names we are connected guys that's why you can see four entries here okay so now i am disconnecting this entry and this entry this entry only one okay now see this is the plus symbol guys we can expand this plus symbol to see the objects Guys, everything will call it as an object in the SQL Server. Listen carefully. We'll call everything as an object in the SQL Server. This is also object, the objects, objects, objects. General wording is object. Tables will call it as an objects. Databases objects. Logins objects. Everything general will call it as an object only. It's a generalized word in SQL Server. So if you want to expand anything, you can double click on this, or else you can simply click on this plus or minus button, guys. Okay. If you want to expand the security, you can double click on the security folder. If you want to expand logins, you can double click on logins folder. And if you want to minimize it, double click on it again. Automatically, it will be minimized. Or you can use plus or minus symbol. Either double click to open, double click to close. <coughs> Clear, guys. So this is how you can open each of the objects slowly. Slowly, we'll learn the DBA related. See, guys, don't think all things will be all the objects will be used by DBA. No. only few objects will be used by dba remaining all are based on their requirements people are going to use okay but most of the options will be covered guys don't worry so this is how we can connect to sql server so now you can see a play button right when you see a play button means that is see, that is up and running that is currently running so you can see here a play button sometimes you can see a stop button here sometimes you can see a stop button here this is called what is this guys can anyone tell me what is this any idea what is this button called play button uh, maybe it, it is in live mm. that is <clears throat> service watcher very good who is that ramana ramana very good ramana service watcher this is called service watcher guys service watcher we using this button we can watch the service that is called service watcher okay that is called service watcher button guys so in case if sql server is up and running it will show you play button if sql server is in stopped state it will show you stop button okay if it is in paused state it will show you pause button sometimes it will show you question mark button so like this you can see some of the options okay in the organization you can see all these options guys this is called service watcher button right now what we can do now uh, anyone tried installing ssms guys anyone tried installing ssms and any issues you faced ah uh, i installed it so it was successful right ramana yeah yeah it was successful okay very good right so now listen carefully so in the, in this ssms management studio lot of options are there slowly we'll discuss one by one based on our requirements so this is called connect button using this connect button you can connect to database engine okay you can give the computer name whatever it is default instance or named instance you can give and you can connect this is again connect button also this is also connect button only this is disconnect button and this is called refresh button what is this guys refresh so listen carefully whenever you are doing anything very 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 important thing whenever you are doing something whenever you are doing something once that is completed always refresh to see the changes for example you created a table imagine in a database you created a table okay so it will not show you directly see in the databases generally tables will be there in the databases these are the databases okay in the databases generally you can see the tables okay like this if you expand you can see the objects so but when you create any table generally it will not show you directly guys okay it will not show you directly so whatever you do just select the server just refresh it always make a habit of this 
sometimes people will do things and uh, they will not refresh they will come back to me hey shanmuk i created a database but i cannot see the database i created one table but i am not able to see the table very simple solution refresh very important very powerful option guys refresh whatever you do refresh 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 then only you can see the changes guys otherwise sometimes it will not show you the changes also okay this is your health checks <clears throat> now these are all the other options like if you want to open any scripts and all you can use or you can open using this open button any scripts and all you can go to particular section you can go to this go to section and all we can use we can replace find and replace okay you can use options object explorer details like this we have registered fee server these are all different different features and the tools also we have different different tools sql server profile database engine tuning advisor like that we have some tools and the window we can see lot of option guys slowly you'll get to know one by one one by one nothing to worry we are not going to discuss on the first day itself slowly based on the concepts that we are discussing during that time i'll explain you don't worry i'm just giving you a overview of the management studio okay so in case if you if you write any script and all any query and all if you want to save you can use this save button guys you can use this save button and you can this is a save all button if you want to write any query you can use new query window what is that guys new query click on this click on this it will open a window now this is called query window what is this guys what is this it will open a white space now it is opening so when you click on new query automatically it will open a query window in the query window you can write whatever you want you can execute whatever you want guys this is called this white space is called query window just click on this i am just increasing the font <coughs> This is very big. You want to be enough? Okay. So you want to write any query? For example, I want to see the version of SQL Server. Tell me the query, guys. What is the query we'll use to see the version of the SQL Server? Select version. Select the date version. Select the date date version. How to see the edition of the SQL Server? Same only. Same one. Okay. So select the date version. See now. Here. i just gave one query okay now we have a query here so now i want to execute this query guys if only one query is there no need to select key okay you can directly go and execute it but before executing you want to see whether this query is right or wrong before executing you want to see whether this query is right or wrong so for that we have an option called parse button see this right button is a parse button guys using this parse button you can check whether this query is right or wrong you can see if it is showing command completed successfully that means query is correct guys this is called query window this is called output pane are you getting the point guys this is called query window where we'll execute the queries when you execute the query we'll get the output right this is called output pane what is this guys output pane okay so now i just selected this query and i just executed this query and before executing i just checked whether this query is right or wrong using this parse button you can also check any query always the best option before running lines and lines of scripts this is just a single line of command sometimes developers will give you hundreds and thousand lines of script they might ask you to execute don't blindly execute guys copy the script and check just whether this is right or wrong if it is right if there is there are no issues then it will show you command completed successfully okay just currently we are checking now whether command is right or wrong but how to execute this command guys there are two options one is click on execute button what is that guys click on execute button it will execute guys or else we have one more option called keyboard option alt plus x what is that guys keyboard shortcut alt plus x will also help you to execute the queries alt plus x will help you now i am pressing i am not clicking on execute now i am simply using my keyboard so alt x now you can see output okay there are two ways either you can click on execute or you can simply click on alt x alt plus x will help you to execute the query so this is called object explorer this section this section whatever you can see left side is called object explorer where you can see all the 
objects where you can explore the objects called object explorer this portion is called query editor query window okay this is called output pane guys is it clear output pane this is called output pane so whenever you execute any query always it's a good practice to parse it first if it is showing command completed successfully then you can execute it are we good guys <clears throat> any questions any doubts no shanu okay one minute eh? just one minute guys
yeah sorry i'm talking in mute any anything any any questions guys any questions any doubts anything to discuss are we good ssms guys are we good now so using this execute button we can execute any type of queries guys using this execute button we can execute any type of queries i'll also explain like this also we have to keep in mind while executing the okay on which database you're executing and all i'll tell you everything don't worry okay are we good now as of now are we good object explorer query window output pane execute button parse button are we good now yes Fine. sir okay. So now let's discuss what will happen when you install SQL Server. What kind of changes will be there when you install SQL Server? Okay, what will happen when we install Okay, so what will happen when we install uh, SQL Server? Okay, what will happen in the Windows machine when we install SQL Server? So now that means what kind of services, what kind of folders will be created in the Windows machine when you install SQL Server? Listen carefully, very simple. First, let's discuss about the services that gets created when you install the SQL Server. Go to services.msc in the run in your Windows Server, not in your local laptop. So now when you install SQL Server, generally listen carefully, when you install SQL Server for the first time, okay, when when we install SQL Server, okay, for the first time, for the first time, it will create six services, guys, six services. When we install SQL Server for the first time, it will create six services. Out of six, four services are specific services. And two services are shared services, guys. Two services are shared services. So what and all specific services are there? What and all shared services are there? I'll show you. Go to the server. Go to services.msc. Now you can see. Guys, tell me. You can see few services right here. What are specific services? What are shared services? Can you identify and tell me? DB engine. No, oh, very good. Agent. Agent very, is not very, there. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Guess it. Guess it. You can see answer on the screen, guys. VSS. VSS is shared service. VSS is a, VSS is a shared or specific? Shared, shared. Okay. Next. SQL Server browser also shared. Okay. Remaining all are. Uh, ECIP. Very good. Okay. So guys, generally, generally, we will have a habit, right? When we are staying in PG, what we will do, guys, generally? Normally, tell me, when we are staying in PG and all, what we will do? On our, plate, on our plates, what we will do? We'll write our name, right? Just to make sure they are not mixing with others. At least a mark, something will keep it on our belongings. Correct? Sometimes we'll write our name. Not sure whether if you are 90 kids, Generally, we use it to have our name on the plates, glass, whatever we are using. Okay. So, if you have a name that belongs to you, that means that is a specific thing. Okay. Here also in the brackets, you can see name. What and all services are there with the names in the brackets? Those are called which services, guys? Shared or specific? Specific. Specific services. Specific. If you see names in the brackets, those services are specific services. On the PG things, fans, refrigerator, AC, washing machine, you don't see any name. Those are shared services. Those are shared services. So see here, VSS writer, okay, and a browser. You don't see any name in the brackets, guys. You don't see any name in the brackets. SQL Server browser, SQL Server VSS writer. So what and all services will be created, guys? So total for the first time, six services will be created. So out of six, four are specific services. So database engine is a specific service. SQL Server database engine. Okay, or SQL Server service. Simply I'll tell you, SQL Server service. <coughs> is a specific service. Next, SQL Server agent, agent service. service. Agent service is a specific service. Next, 
फुल टेक्स्ट सर्विस फुल टेक्स्ट सर्विस इज अ स्पेसिफिक सर्विस नेक्स्ट सीईआईपी सर्विस कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस इंप्रूवमेंट प्रोग्राम सीईआईपी सर्विस कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस इंप्रूवमेंट प्रोग्राम इज दीज फोर आर स्पेसिफिक सर्विसेस गाइस आर यू गेटिंग द पॉइंट व्हेन यू इंस्टॉल सीक्वल सर्वर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वी विल गेट सिक्स सर्विसेस व्हेन यू इंस्टॉल सीक्वल सर्वर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सिक्स सर्विसेस आउट ऑफ दीज सिक्स सर्विसेस फोर स्पेसिफिक व्हाट आर दोज मेन सर्विस सीक्वल सर्वर सर्विस एजेंट सर्विस ओके फुल टेक्स्ट सर्विस एंड सीईआईपी सर्विस एंड व्हाट आर द टू शेयर सर्विसेस गाइस ब्राउजर एंड वीएसएस राइटर व्हाट आर दोस टू शेयर सर्विसेस विल बी इंस्टॉल गाइस ब्राउजर सर्विस एंड वीएसएस राइटर सर्विस सो नेक्स्ट टाइम व्हेन यू इंस्टॉल सेकंड कॉपी टोटल हाउ मेनी सर्विसेस विल बी देयर गाइस Tell me your oh. answers in the chat. In the chat. In the chat. In the chat. Type your answers in the chat. Okay. If I install two instances in one Windows machine, total, total, how many services will be there in the Windows machine related to SQL Server? Related to SQL Server. Total. I am asking total. Pawan, Srivani. Total. I am asking. <clears throat> okay i'll tell you again when you install sql server for the first time generally six services will be created out of six four are specific services two are shared services when you install sql server for the second time next time shared services are already there right so shared services will not be created again right so only four extra specific services will be created so total how many for two instances now tell me your answer okay now is it clear guys everyone is it clear those who said wrong answer for them i explained now is it clear everyone hmm now if i install five instances in my windows machine total how many services will be created five instances Five instances in my machine. Total, how many? Said, don't tell your answers. Type your answers in the chat. If I install five instances in my Windows machine, total, how many services? Abdullah. So if it's confused, there is a formula also. Okay. So what is the formula, guys? Four n plus two n means number of instances. Number of instances. So five instances. Four into five, twenty plus two, twenty-two is the answer, guys. Each instance will have four specific services. So five instances, five into four specific services, total twenty specific services. Plus two shared services total all together will be twenty two. Now type your answer. Still I am not getting hundred percentage accuracy. So again I am asking if I installed thirteen instances in the Windows machine total how many services? You can use calculator. If I installed thirteen instances in one Windows machine total how many services will be created? Thirteen instances. Thirteen. Very good, guys. Okay, so Priya, 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 Priya. Hmm. Okay, Priya, Priya.
your first answer is also wrong your last answer is also wrong open calculator priya open calculator just use this formula type your answer in the chat 13 instances i'm waiting for your answer priya Hmm. Now is it clear? Okay, very good. Okay, guys, is it clear, guys? Total how many services will be created? Fifty-four. Yeah, yeah. So yes, now, yeah. So normally I'm asking. Forget about thirteen. Normally I'm asking. So is it clear now how many services will be created? How to identify whether it's a specific service or shared service? What each service will do? Is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, very, yes. Very good, guys. Okay, so that is all about your services. Now, what and all folders will be created, guys? This is very important. Sometimes, if the services are not running, you should be able to check whether services are running or not. If they are not running, you can start the service. Okay, you can start the service. If the services are not running, you can simply right click and you can start the service. So, which service you are starting, you should know, right? Which service you are starting, or sometimes you have to stop the service. Which service you are stopping? What is the impact of each service? You should know, right? That's why it's very important to know the services that are created after the installation, guys. Okay, so this is how that will be managed. Now, what and all folders will be created when you install SQL Server? Let me check. So let me open this PC. What is the shortcut to open this PC, guys? What is the shortcut to open this PC? Windows plus E. Windows plus E. Okay, open this PC. Click on this PC, you can see drives, open C drive, and here you can see program files, go to program files, and you can see a Microsoft SQL Server. Whenever you install anything, automatically it will create a folder, guys, okay? So open this Microsoft SQL Server. Now you can see different, different folders. Guys, this path up to here, this is called instance-based directory, okay? instance Sometimes your lead or manager will ask you, hey, go to instance base directory, go to instance root directory. You should know, right, what is base directory, what is root directory, what is binaries and all. So up to here, this is called instance base directory. This is called instance base directory, guys. Up to this path is called instance base directory. If you go inside any numbering folders, any numbering folders, this is called instance binaries. What is this, guys? instance binaries instance binaries okay this is called up to here up to if you enter into any numbering folder that is called instance binaries and we have one more very important folder called okay if you go back you can see the folder okay you can see two folders if you go inside if you want to see the default instance files you will go to ms sql server if you want to see the named instance files you'll go to instance name folder. I told you, right, during the installation, we have instance ID, right? Remember, guys, during the installation, instance name, you can see instance ID section. You can see a name in the instance ID section. I told you during that time, this is the folder name. See here, it will create the name of the folder in the C program files, Microsoft SQL Server, guys. C program files, Microsoft SQL Server. Naveen, Naveen Reddy, both are same or different? Naveen, Naveen Reddy. No, actually, it's in Hyderabad, it's a huge rating, Shanmukh. That's why I okay. logged in a mobile and also on a laptop, Shanmukh. Fine, fine, no issues. No issues. Hello? Yeah, yeah, Naveen, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay, Naveen, no problem. Just to want to okay. check. That's fine, you can be in mute, okay? Fine. So now let me go back to this. Right. So now if you see here, now if you see here, right. Okay, Navin, Navin, I got you. Okay. So if you see here, this is your default instance uh, folder. 
this is your named instance folder if you go inside this folder any folder so this is called what is this guys this is called instance instance a root directory what is that guys instance a root directory so what and all things we discussed guys okay navin i got you i got you no issues okay instance a root directory okay so now if you see here okay so now if you see here this is your instance base directory up to here and this is your if you go inside any numbering folder that is called instance binary and if you go to the main folder that is called instance base directory the instance base directory is very important directory guys the instance base directory is very important directory so all the things all the data related stuff all the sql server related stuff everything will be stored in the instance root directory if you go inside root directory you can see ms sql folder if you open ms sql server you can see all the folders backup files backup drives okay data drives so if you open data drives you can see very important data files and log files guys these are the data files and log files i'll explain what is data file what is log file what are the functionalities of each file and all so that will be discussed guys okay so this is how the folders will be organized guys this is how the folders will be organized sometimes sometimes in the interviews they will ask you in case if the installation is failed how you will troubleshoot how to answer guys summary.txt hmm summary.txt very good summary.txt is one option next log files very good where we can see that log files he, here only instance folder uh, hmm okay so now listen carefully guys in this folder this is your instance root directory you can see data files log files and all normal database data files log files and all but any sql server related logs error logs kind of stuff where it will be stored guys in the instance binary so go to highest folder guys i installed 2019 so which is the folder that belongs to 2019 guys 2019 which folder will belongs to 2019 out of all these numbering folders 150 150, 150. you know right sql server 2019 means 15.0 if you remove that dot it will be compatibility 150 so 150 is the correct folder for 2019 so go to 150 folder there you can see an important folder called setup bootstrap folder open this setup bootstrap folder there you can see one more folder called log folder no need to remember all these things but they might ask you in the interviews in case if the installation is failed how you will troubleshoot he will tell summary.txt as the answer the next question will be where you can see the summary.txt file you can tell immediately once installation is completed it will give you a link to open summary.txt file you might tell like that but he will not he will ask you by mistake you closed that window but i want to see the summary.txt file how we will see the summary.txt file where we can see the summary.txt file the answer is instance binaries setup bootstrap folder inside that log folder inside that date and timestamp folders there you can see summary file guys okay if you open this summary.txt you can see the see last action final result request reaction install are you getting the point guys the first place where we will check the installation related errors guys the first place where we will check the installation related errors instance binary hmm summary.txt file if they ask where we can see the instance uh, summary.txt file so you have to tell in the instance binaries we have set up bootstrap folder in the set up bootstrap folder we will have log folder in the log folder we will have date and timestamp folder in that based on the date and time stamp if you open that folder there you can see summary.txt file this is how we can troubleshoot the you can open the summary.txt file guys that is one option okay let me write down <clears throat> the installation is failed first we have to check the summary.txt file this will be there in the in the instance binaries 
binaries mm, set up bootstrap folder set up bootstrap folder okay bootstrap folder inside that log folder inside that date and timestamp folder okay there you can see summary.txt file but is this enough guys is summary text file is enough to see the logs no okay actually no okay so what is the next area if you don't see in the setup bootstrap file where we can see there is another file called detailed.txt detailed.txt file detail.txt this also will be there in the same location this file is also there in the same location guys let me show you okay detail.txt so the second place where we will see the installation errors guys in the detailed.txt so where we can see the detail.txt go to the server open any of the folder open any of the date and timestamp folder there you can see detail.txt if you open this here you can see this is a complete file error related files very big file see summary.txt is actually a small file you can just scroll it it's not a big file you can just go and check each and everything easily but but if you don't find errors in the summary.txt file your second location will be the second destination will be your detailed.txt what is the file name guys detailed.txt it is a very big file we cannot go and check this much big file and all guys see how much big it is see this much big file is there so out of this show shanmuk how to check the errors then if this much big file is there how can i check the errors okay we cannot check right easily so what we have to do simply very simple you know that if this is a big notepad what we will do we will control f search with a failed or error or not found okay or uh, what else we can use minus ve minus ve is a keyword minus ve so like this using all these keywords we'll search in this document and we'll try to find out the reason why it was failed and all sometimes you don't see exact reason but you can see some hint so you can you have to for example in this in, if imagine this is the error but if you feel that this is not completely uh, this is not clear error you have to go through up to 5 to 10 lines above of the error and below 5 to 10 lines of the error you have to go guys ok one minute huh? just one minute Sai Chapan Sai Chapan 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 right okay so what you can do in case if you don't see the complete error okay what you have to do in case if you are getting a a, a a hint so what you have to do guys so you have to just go through the 5 to 10 lines above to the error 5 to 10 lines below to the error so that it will give you some hints how to troubleshoot and all okay this is the second place where we will see the installation error so first place is summary.txt file very important entry question if the installation is failed, where you will check it? So the first place is summary.txt file. Immediately we will ask you a follow-up question. Where I can see the summary.txt file? In the instance binaries, setup bootstrap folder, in the log folder, we can see summary.txt file. In the same log location, we can also see a folders with the date and timestamp. If you go inside the date and timestamp, we can see detail.txt. So the second place I will check is detail.txt. Okay, so in the same location, if you observe, in the same location, if you observe, you can see one file, guys, one familiar file. What is that file? Can anyone tell me? We can see a familiar file. 
you know that file name configuration file very good what is the use of this configuration file dot ini command uh, execution you can install in command prop also mm. uh, whatever the installation are there you can see in this file so when you are trying to install sql server you will select all the components right component settings configurations throughout the practice throughout the particular installation right so what i disc what we discussed right in the morning windows machine don't understand the gui windows machine will only knows commands so the actions will be converted into commands that installation command will be stored in the configuration file at ini when you hit install button this file it will call into the command prompt it will check each and every input and as per the input it will install sql server let me open this configuration file dot ini you can see see this is the command guys last command options i accept the license terms action is equal to install i accept license terms and uh, okay uh, what is this suppress privacy statement notice false so whatever semicolon you can see that is called your command okay whatever line you can see whatever line you can see that is command semicolon is a comment guys comment enu true white false quite simple false okay ui mode you can see okay we have selected few components right see here instance name what instance name we gave guys batch 55 sql 2019 right okay and where we are installing install shared directory okay install shared directory you can see here wow directory instance id you can see same instance id startup type we have selected automatic if you remember these are the service accounts you can see here and you can see other options also add current user agent service account instance directory you can see okay add service account also is there max drop and all we didn't set a, select anything but these are the by default options see sql sysadmin accounts add current user okay so tempdb configurations these are all tempdb configurations and max server memory and all so this command this file this configuration file dot ini will be called into the command prompt based on the commands it will select each and every command it will start installing the sql server using this configuration file dot ini guys are we good any questions any doubts configuration file dot ini so guys no tell doubts. me in how many ways we can install sql server guys any idea chalo let me using complete command prompt you can install very good let me complete this guys let me complete this so the first option is summary.txt file we can see the installation related errors second option if you don't find enough information in summary.txt file where we have to check the installation related errors guys listen carefully listen carefully not only for installations okay not only for installation the same locations you can use for installations uninstallations patchings upgradations installation uninstallation patching upgradation uh, remove patching i'll tell you what is patching remove patching and all remove patching for all these cases okay all these cases you have to check in the summary.txt only if the installation is failed you have to check summary.txt file detail.txt file if uninstallation is failed you have to check summary.txt file detail.txt file if patching is failed you have to check summary.txt file detail.txt file if upgradation is failed the same locations you have to check guys so if anyone is asking if my patching is failed where you will start troubleshooting the answer is first summary.txt file next detail.txt file third is event viewer application logs if my sql server uninstallation is failed where you will check same answer first summary.txt file second detail.txt file third event viewer application logs if my upgradation is failed where you will check if my remove patching is failed where you will check guys are you getting the point for all these five cases installations and installations patching remove patching upgradation if these five things are failed the first place where you will check guys where you will check summary.txt the second place where you will check 
detail.txt these files where you can find bootstrap bootstrap location. setup bootstrap folder in the instance binaries okay, okay. setup bootstrap folder inside the, inside the setup bootstrap log folder Date. inside log folder Date and time folder okay fine the third option what is the third place guys what is the third place event viewer application event log event. event viewer application logs guys i'll show you okay application logs so go to server what you can do guys what you can do open just click on this windows button just type event viewer just type event it will come if not what you can do windows r e v e n t v w r shortcut e v e n t v w r okay you can open the event viewer also so now event viewer will, will open guys right so now see very important so this is windows related logs guys so sql server is also windows level application so all the all the application related logs it will be tracked in the event viewer and left side you can see if you expand you can see one more option called application logs click on the application logs guys there you can see errors related see here you can see all the errors related to all the applications but if you want to see related to sql server you have to, you filter. to filter yeah very good pandu so you have to filter this logs guys you have to filter this see we can see here information 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 if it is information we can ignore it guys and sometimes we can see warning sometimes we can see errors also okay so you can see warnings in between you can see warnings it's easy here it is error again i am saying errors means don't think only sql related errors here the source belongs to the source should be sql server or else we can simply filter it how to filter click on this filter okay where is that filter filter yeah filter current log click on that filter current log so what you want to see i want to see critical errors errors warnings okay i want to see related to which source click on event sources related to sql server right so go down go to yes 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 and yes okay now we got yes services go down sq 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 yeah sq you can see here see this is your named instance okay you can see ms sql server also somewhere sql ms sql server go to m m m m m m m m m m m m m Hmm. See MS SQL Server. MS SQL Server. So if you select these sources, then only these sources related errors, warnings, critical information you can see, guys. As of now, nothing. As of now, we don't see that kind of information, warnings, and also that's why this is empty. Okay, you can if you want to see the information for the same, you can also select the information. Now you can see lot of entries. See, only SQL Server related information you can see. Okay, so like this. you can check the logs guys first place summary.txt second place detail.txt third place event viewer application logs filter current log is it clear guys any questions doubts no doubts no question one ओके यदि क्वेश्चन डाउट्स गाइस नो क्वेश्चन नो क्वेश्चन फाइन ओके सो इफ यू आर गुड व्हाट वी कैन डू नवीन रेड्डी ओके फाइन लेट्स डिस्कस ए स्मॉल टॉपिक आई डोंट वांट टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू टॉपिक गाइस Mm -hmm. Okay, take a break. Come back after fifteen minutes. We'll discuss uh, any other small topic. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell that uh, how can we uh, find the commands in the SQL server? 
how can we find the commands uh? uh, i mean uh, uh, whatever the commands is there in the sql server i will tell you during the commands okay we will use different different commands right see that is actually no use there is no use of such commands but still i'll show you where we can see the commands okay okay i'll okay. i'll tell you i'll tell you don't worry yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. We'll be back after fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's continue, guys. So what we'll do now, we'll try to create one database. Okay, why? Because now we have to create actually table. I'll show you how to create tables. I told you right in the SQL Server, the data will be stored in the form of tables. In the SQL Server, the data will be stored in the form of tables. so i'll create a table but there is some hierarchy what is the hierarchy if i want to create a table where these tables will be created guys generally in the sql server in the sql server where the tables will be created database database. The database very good in the sql server the tables will be created in the database guys this is the hierarchy okay there are two types of hierarchies one is physical hierarchy second one is logical hierarchy how the data will be stored physically and logically okay so the logical hierarchy how the data will be stored logically logical hierarchy okay so inside sql server listen carefully inside sql server we will have databases inside databases we will have schemas inside schemas we will have tables is it clear guys is it clear so if i want to create a table first of all what i have to create guys schema if i want to create schema what i have to create guys database if i want to create a database what i have to create guys sql server so we have sql server ready if i want to create table what i have to create now databases schemas no need to create manually by default it will be created okay by default dbo schema will be created inside that default schema we can create if you want but it's not mandatory but the tables will be stored at the end of the at the end of the day the tables will be stored in the schemas only what is schema guys logical container logical container is called a schema in this logical container lot of tables will be stored is it clear guys how the data will be stored logically in the sql server is it clear everyone guys yes yes, yes sir. Sir. okay yes. so in the sql server we will have databases inside the databases we will have schemas inside the schemas we will have tables so if i want to create a table i should have schema so nothing to worry by default we have some schemas we can use that but i have to first create a database i have to first create the database so let's create the database now okay listen carefully little 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 deep we are going but don't worry okay it's easy only so how to create the database in two ways we can create the database one way is using gui second way is using using sql query. command yes oh, and command. query using query and using gui you can guys one more thing i just want to highlight we can install sql servers in many ways okay we can install sql servers in many ways we can install sql server in different ways so we have already discussed gui way of installation right yesterday night today morning we installed sql server using gui 
okay we can install sql server using gui we can install sql server using cui gui 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 graphical user interface gui command user interface okay guys so using command also i can install sql server using command also i can install sql server that is the assignment i am giving it to you guys for the next class install sql server 2019 using command prompt what is the assignment install sql server 2019 using command prompt so now if you see let me show you you don't worry guys i am going to our youtube channel okay so now see this is our youtube channel go to our youtube channel okay sos university open this go to search button last you can see search and here you type install sql server using command these things and all we don't need to discuss guys okay we don't install sql servers using command in the organization but this is extra subject so shanmukh monday to friday i have to practice what i have to practice explore 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 so if you want to learn extra subject you can try these assignments no one will ask you to install or to write a command to install sql server no one will ask you okay this is like a, for your interest we can install sql server in five or six ways see here installing sql server using command what command what kind of command we have to use everything is there in this video okay this is from our channel only at swas university if you are interested you can it's not mandatory so the assignment is install sql server 2019 using command prompt of course anyhow you will install using C gui okay try installing sql server 2019 using command prompt what kind of command i have to use watch this video you will get an idea or we have this what is that um, um chat gpt sql uh, command to install sql server in the command prompt to type like that you will get a command we can use chat gpt inputs okay so that is another way second way of installation third way is also there what is there guys what is that guys ini based installation ini based installation using ini file we can install ini file you know right configuration file that ini there also the command will be stored using that ini file we can install sql server that also you can find in our channel that also you can find in our channel how to install sql server using ini based installation okay simply type ini see you can see here sql 2008 ini based installation 2012 command prompt installation okay and we have an, one more method guys what is that what is that method guys sysprep installation slipstream installation powershell installation using all these ways we can install sql server guys but but generally in the organization will use only one method gui only okay so you don't worry no one will ask you hey install cui install ini based install sysprep install slipstream install powershell using powershell no one will ask you no one will ask you this is your extra knowledge for your extra knowledge only okay guys just everything you can find in our channel if you want to see what is that ini based what is that slipstream what is that sysprep you can go and check in our channel i earlier i did few videos okay earlier i did few videos slipstream installation installation okay so you can see here slipstream advanced slipstream so you can see few videos on this slipstream installation and sysprep installation also sysprep installation or simply type sysprep okay so you can see sysprep installation see you can see sysprep installation so in this way you can easily check okay sysprep installation and all what is sysprep installation how to use sysprep installation and all everything we covered guys but this is only for extra subject only no one will ask you in the interviews guys okay fine now i want to create a database i'm coming to the another topic so now i want to create a database i can create database in two ways one is gui method right click new database another one is command method create database database name let me try creating database using gui how to create a database if you expand database you can see two folders one is system databases 
Second one is database snapshots. System databases are very important. Okay. To manage SQL Server, we have four system databases, master, model, MSDB, tempdb. Very important system databases. There is a separate class on system database. What master will do, what model will do, what the role of the MSDB, what is the role of the tempdb will be discussed in the next class, coming classes, guys. There is a separate session on system databases. Don't worry. We have two types of databases. One is user database. Second one is system database. System database, you will get it when you install SQL Server. User databases, you can create whenever you want based on the requirements. Now, how to create the database? Right click on the databases, new database. Before creating the database, first of all, you should know what is database. What is database, guys? What is the database? Collection of data. Very good. Database is a collection of data. But how the data will be stored in this database? Database is a collection of minimum two files. What are those two files, guys? Yeah. 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 Data file. Second Lots. one is log file. Okay, log file. Forget about it. Little new terminologies will be there, will be introduced. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Okay. So data file will be used to store the data permanently and the log file will be used to store the data temporarily. temporarily. Okay. So when you are creating database means by default, these two files will be created. Now you have to understand the physical hierarchy. Physical hierarchy. Let's go to physical hierarchy. Okay, let's go to physical hierarchy. Let me do one thing. Uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, okay. Okay. D drive and SQL Server, SQL Data, E drive. Where is my SQL Server? No. Now listen carefully, guys. So whenever you create a database, how the database will be created internally, what will happen? Okay, let's try to understand. Okay, from the scratch, don't worry, it's simple only. Uh, new terminologies will be there, but don't worry guys, it's easy. I'll try to simplify it. Let's wait for one diagram. So let it load first. Okay, and this one, I want this one, yeah. Now, see here, this is how the data will be stored physically. Earlier, I told you, right, there are two ways of storing the data. One is physical hierarchy, second one is logical hierarchy. Logical means the SQL server inside SQL server databases, inside the databases, schemas, inside schemas, tables. That is, logically, the data will be stored. But physically, how the data will be stored? So, if you see here, instance, in the instance, we will have databases. Okay. In the instance, we will have databases. In the databases, we will have file groups and log files. I told you, right? So, database is a collection of two files. One data file, second one is log file. But the files won't exist independently. The files will be exist in file groups only. Okay. So in the database, file groups will be there and log files also will be there. If you go inside the file groups, you will have files, data files. We can say data files. If you go inside the data file, you will have extents. If you go inside the extents, you will have pages. Pages. Okay. So these are called pages, guys. 
these are called pages so at the end of the day when you create any table where the table will be stored guys in one database are you getting the point listen carefully how the data will be stored physically inside the instance databases inside the databases file groups and log files inside the file groups we will have log, data files inside the data files we will have extents inside the extents we will have pages inside the pages we will have tables guys this is how the data will be stored physically so the page what is page page is a basic storage unit of a sql server again i am repeating page is a basic storage unit of a sql server so at the end of the day when you are creating any table where it will be stored guys physical hierarchy sql server inside sql server what we will have guys databases inside databases what we will have guys file, file groups group. file groups inside file groups what we will have guys files. data files data files inside files what we will have guys extents very good inside extents what we will have guys pages yes. what is a page page is a basic storage, storage unit of a sql server at the end of the day when you create any table where it will sit guys where it will sit page on a page what is the size of the page page size is 8 kb page size is 8 kb page size is 8 kb so when you create a table if the table is big sql server will allocate oh, first it will allocate one page for you guys imagine you are creating employee table okay create table table name employee okay with a some columns okay employee id integer i'll explain guys don't worry this is just a syntax employee name emp name var care of 100 i'll tell you what is int what is var care everything i'll tell you don't worry so when you are creating a table where this table will be created guys on a 8 kb page in the table pages okay this table will be created on a page so now you are inserting you started inserting the data now sql server initially will allocate a page for you right so if you are started inserting the data if you are inserting 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 the data if the page is full see now when you are writing notes if you started writing the notes what you will do you will write data 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 once the page is full what you will do next page next page pto what is that paper turnover right okay so when you once the page is full you will go to next page and you are going to write the data if that is full you will go to next page you will write the data so if you are keep on inserting the data what sql server will do guys every time it will allocate 8 kb page 8 kb page 8 kb page for you depends upon your data that you are inserting into the table is it clear guys is the hierarchy clear inside instance database inside database file groups inside file groups data files inside fi data files like extents inside extents we have pages a page is a basic storage unit page size is 8 kb in the interviews they will ask you so not normal interviews if you go to more than 8 years 9 years 10 years experience level interviews they will ask you these kind of questions what is a page what is the size of the page what is an extent how many types of extents are there how to see the extent information all these things under very binaries very basic information guys now is it clear at the end of the day when you create any table it will sit on any data page okay like this collection of eight data pages is called an extent if you see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 collection of eight data pages is called extent see here extent what is extent eight pages what is extent guys extent is nothing but extent is nothing but eight continuous data pages is called an extent but there is another definition also extent is a basic allocation unit extent is a basic allocation unit page is a basic storage unit but extent is a basic allocation unit shanmukh little confusion is there what is the difference between these two 
page listen carefully guys sanmuk i have a table of employee now when i create a table it just used out of 8 kb it just used 4 kb remaining 4 kb free space is there in this space can i use this space to create one more table guess it guys is it possible you just guess it yes or no if there is a free space in the page can i create one more table in the page yes yes sir mm. now tell me no no just now you said yes right why you changed your answer huh <laughs> page is not shareable page is not shareable again i am saying page is not shareable one page is equal to one table if that page is full sql server will allocate another page but if there is a free space in that page sql server will not allow you to create one more table one page is equal to one table if there is a free space also it will not allow you to create one more table in that particular page why when you hit select star from employee command when you are trying to read the data in the table the sql server will load all the associated pages in the memory in the ram so that's why if page is shareable it will create a problem so page is not shareable guys if there is a free space in the page still you cannot create second table in a single page one page one table if the table if the page is not sufficient then sql server will allocate extra page are you getting the point guys is it clear page is not shareable page is not shareable okay that is called page guys can i change page size shanmuk it is 8 kb right you are saying can i change the page size 8 kb to 10 kb 20 kb or 100 kb mm. yes guys just guess it no 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 no, no. no. okay page size is fixed no. guys we cannot change it page size is fixed we cannot change the page size page size we cannot change that is fixed that is architectural design guys architectural designs you cannot change it that is an architectural design that is not a setting it's a design design you will never change it that is a skeleton of the sql server the skeleton structure you cannot change it guys okay now extent extent is nothing but eight continuous data pages one definition extent is also a basic allocation unit so shanmuk what is the difference between storage unit and allocation unit so now when you are creating any table when you are when you are creating any table sql server will allocate a page from extent there are two types of extents two types of extents mixed extent and a uniform extent mixed extent and uniform extent what is this mixed extent and uniform extent guys what is the difference between okay mixed and uniform so now see here so uniform extent is nothing but all the eight pages belongs to same table is called uniform extent see all the eight pages belongs to same table is called uniform the word called uniform all the eight pages belongs to same table is called uniform extent see here uniform extent table 1 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 eight pages will be there 4 plus 4 8 so the, all the eight pages belongs to this extent belongs to single means in all the eight pages only one table will be stored that is called uniform extent mixed extent all the eight pages belongs to eight objects object can be a table object can be an index what is an index i will tell you in the performance tuning classes i will tell you what is index and all don't worry very simple mixed means you know all the eight pages belongs to eight different objects uniform means all the eight pages belongs to same object okay guys so when you are creating why it will it will be like this why shanmuk why we have two types of extents what is the need we can go for a single extent right why again i'll tell you <laughs> hmm. Hmm.
sorry so sql server cannot allocate a page 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 every time like a bits and pieces it will directly allocate the whole extent for you now so shanmukh if it is allocating whole extent for me what is the size of the extent guys what is the general size of the extent what is the definition of extent 64 kb very good the definition is eight continuous data pages eight continuous each page size is 8 kb eight continuous data pages means extent size is 64 kb but for creating a small table if i allocate whole 64 kb to you if you create 1 kb table you are going to waste 63 kb of data right to avoid the data loss to avoid the storage loss okay to save the storage and all we have two types of extents so if you are creating any table for the first time sql server will allocate a page from the mixed extent a page from the mixed extent if you feel that table is growing sql server will allocate uniform extent for you to store the to save the storage are you getting the point guys if the table is not growing only one page is going to be wasted if the table is growing sql server will allocate a complete extent for you instead of giving 88 kb pages it will allocate the whole extent for you but for the first time from which extent it will allocate the page guys from the fixed extent very good so that uh, you are not going to waste the storage if your table is not growing the wastage is only limited to a single page but initially if it is giving i told you right extent is nothing but basic allocation unit imagine sql server is allocating eight pages to a single table if the table is not growing if the table is occupied to one page you are going to waste remaining seven pages guys is it clear guys are we good yes yes for yes, sure guys don't hesitate just let me know if you are not clear these It's are little okay no problem so uh, which point you are stuck akshita this like uh, allocation one allocation okay fine so very simple uh, so generally um, let me go like this okay what we can give okay so for example i don't know whether you married or not generally if you are married we have kids right so for example for them we bought a pencil box so you are going to give the whole pencil box to the kid at a time or you will give one one pencil one 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 pencil why if i give the whole pencil box at a time what they will do what they will do simply they will waste that pencil box whole pencil box they will waste it. depends upon the kid i am saying again not every kid so if i whenever i am creating a new table we don't know what is the size of the table it can be a small table it can be a big table right so if it is a small table if i allocate the whole 64 kb extent to a small table if that table is limited to a single page you are going to waste remaining seven pages right yes sir no akshita yes sir yes right so what i will do to avoid the wastes we have two types of extent mixed extent and uniform extent in the mixed extent all the pages can belongs to different tables so table 1 index 1 table 2 table 3 means all eight pages belongs to eight tables so whenever you are creating a new table first sql server will give you a single page from mixed extent if you are still using if the table is growing okay the table is growing now let's give the uniform extent to this table so if you are giving a single page you are going to save seven pages right but if you give uniform extent you cannot give single single page you have to give all seven eight pages to a single table so that's why instead of wasting remaining seven pages it will give a page from the mixed extent when you are creating a new table if the table is growing it will the subsequent allocations will be uniform extents if the table is not growing 
the wastage will be limited to a single phase. Clear? Yes, yes. I got it now. Yeah. Guys, any questions, doubts, guys? <clears throat> no questions? No doubts? Is it overflowing? Something like that? Is your tummy full, guys? Not yet? Yes, no, yes, uh, yes. Sanuk, what if uh, uh, in uniform extent, two pages are full and break, uh, then uh, the table is not growing? Then sorry, what happens? Sorry, sorry Abhilash, I am not getting your point. Uh, uh, in uniform extent, okay. extent uh, one or uh, two pages are full and that's then after right. the see, table see, see. is stopped growing. No, no, no. That's why SQL Server initially will give a page from the initially when you create a table. SQL Server will allocate page from the mixed extent. That's why to avoid the wastage. If the table is not growing, it will allocate from the mixed extent. If the table is growing, it will allocate from the uniform extent. Based on the usage, SQL Server will allocate extents for you. Guys, nowhere you can see the extents and all. This is theory, theoretical subject, guys. Nowhere you can see extents. I'll show you. There is one command to see extents and all. But we don't deal with it. Practically, we don't deal with it. This is an internal information. Are you getting the point, guys? You don't worry. Just try to understand the concept. Maybe in the interviews, it might help you. That's it. Even in the interviews also, they don't ask you for five, six years of experienced people. More than eight years, nine years only, they will ask. So if you don't get it, don't worry. Generally, these are like, this is how the SQL Server will manage the storage, organize the pages. So if the table is not growing, SQL Server will allocate pages from mixed extent. So if it is mixed extent, the other page will be used to other table, right? You are not wasting the other pages. What is the definition of mixed extent? All the eight pages belongs to eight different objects. What is the definition of uniform extent? All the eight pages belongs to single object. So if table is not growing, SQL Server will allocate a page from mixed extent. So other pages, it will be used for other <coughs> tables and all. If the table is growing, it will allocate uniform extent so that all the eight pages belongs to a single object. Clear? Ablash? Yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. So if it is clear, uh, maybe, okay, uh, not sure. People are little doubt. So let's stop here, guys. Yeah, Prasad, any questions? Uh, no, no, no. I am okay. Clear. Yeah. Okay, fine. So as of now, <laughs> logical hierarchy, physical hierarchy, is it clear, guys, everyone? Yeah, sure. Next yes. class, in the next class, I'll I'll show you how to create a database. It will extend for 30 more minutes. I don't want to okay, disturb your brains now. In the next class, freshly, we'll create the database. Okay. As of now, just try to remember this, whatever we discussed, the pages, file groups, files. Just try to remember these points for the next class. Okay, we'll continue the discussion, guys. Okay, fine. Questions, doubts, anything to discuss? <coughs> Okay. What is the difference between table and page? Both are the same. Difference between table and page. Yes. Okay. Very good. So a page is a storage area. Okay. Page is a storage area. A table is a data, a content. For example, see, if you ask me, you have a notebook. And in your notebook, if you open, you can see the pages. On on the page, you can write something. Whatever data you're writing on the page, that is called your table. And where you're writing, that is called page. Both are not same. Table will be stored on the page. Are you getting the point? A table, at the end of the day, it will sit on a page. So page is a storage area. Okay? A table is a logical area where you're storing the data physically using a page. That's it. Page will be having 8KB only, right? Ah, page size is 8KB. No. Oh, got it. Page size, extent size, we cannot change. That is fixed. If anyone is asking in the interviews also, yes, we cannot change. Tell them confidently. They will ask you whether we can change in the latest versions, whether we can change in the older versions. No, that is a 
that is the <laughs> skeleton of the sql server that is the behavior of the sql server that is the architecture design of the sql server that we cannot change okay mm. yeah questions guys questions doubts anything to discuss mm. uh yes no uh, yes, if I there are uh, if there are five tables and after that uh, it start uh, growing then it falls under mixed extent only right no 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 you cannot understand like that five tables means five are small whenever you create any table five tables means five tables you will create right whenever you are creating a table at that time it will give mixed extent if any of these five tables are growing then okay. the subsequent like for example employee table is there saida when you create employee table initially this table has to sit on one place right that place is called page so what sql server will do when you create employee table it will give you a page from the mixed extent now you forget about this employee table now you are not inserting any data so as you are not inserting data you are going to waste how many pages how many pages are uh, remaining all oh, seven no 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 you will get a page from mixed extent for the first time if you are getting a page from mixed extent other pages will be used for other tables yeah the newly created table. yes yeah. that's why it will allocate a page from mixed extent initially if it is allocating a from uniform extent the your your definition is correct it is going to waste all the seven pages but it is not allocating from uniform extent right it is allocating from mixed extent so if the table is not growing only one page is going to be wasted uh, other seven pages will be used for other tables or other objects if the table is growing then sql server will allocate a uniform extent if the table is started okay. growing then the subsequent allocations to the employee table will be uniform extent so as you said five tables employee 1 employee 2 employee 3 employee 4 employee 5 all the five tables will be created sql server will allocate five <laughs> different pages from mixed extent if any of these five employee tables are growing employee two table is growing then for employee two table sql server will allocate the subsequent allocations will be uniform extents yeah okay okay got it yeah yeah clear guys <clears throat> okay done Fine. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Blush. Um, sorry, but I have a question. Actually, uh, as you explained, the default instance of uh, connecting to SSMS, uh, you said you uh, we can connect uh, through uh, the computer name and the local host and the dot and the local. What if I uh, connected with the uh, computer name and created a database? Is it a uh, uh, visible or accessible? Uh, We, see, if we uh, next time connect to local host or local see whatever or however you connected whether you connected using computer name or local host or local at the end of the day <coughs> you connected to same instance so don't think local means only locally it will be there remotely if you connect you don't see the database nothing like that those are just names just names to connect that's it local in the sense it doesn't belongs to only local even though you connected to the default instance using computer name or using local host or using local or using dot at the end of the day those are not two different entries to show you locally and globally at the end of the day these are all the four ways of connecting to the default instance so when you create any database that will be created in the sql server default instance that will be visible to all globally it's not limited to locally okay yeah thank right. you your thinking of local is different but this is just a name of local it's not belongs to local okay Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Okay, guys. Okay, thank you. We'll connect in the next weekend, Saturday morning, seven a.m. IST. For US people, next Friday evening, nine thirty p.m. EST. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Bye. Good day. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Sir.